Hello, welcome to my presentation on path contract testing. I'm Claire Chen. I'm your host tonight. Um, how do you ensure your integrations are not breaking? Um, so who am I? Um, I'm Claire, and I'm a QA software engineer with over 11 years of experience. Um, I'm a runner, I'm adventurous, and I'm a little quirky. Um, I currently work for Kenzon. Um, Kenzon is Okay, so they told me to say this, essentially. It's <laughs> a software engineering and digital consulting firm that uses technology to help companies run their businesses better. We, spe we specialize in application and platform development, cloud virtualization, and digital transformation. Um, to stay leading edge, a big part of my position at Kenzon is to stay abreast of any new advancements in QA software practices, um, one of these most recent technologies that I've learned a lot about is path contract testing. So what does path contract testing help with anyways? Um, the challenge, microservices make development fast and efficient, but by having the separation, deployments can be fraught with breakages. So I actually just took this microservice diagram from offline, um, but essentially like you have a bunch of front-end services here, um, and then a bunch of back-end services here, and there's a lot of interactions between those. You can have a bunch of different development teams that are working in isolation on each of the services, and each of them can do a bunch of things at the same time. The problem becomes when you try to integrate back together, there's often a lot of breakages. Um, yeah, so having these breakages when you're deploying can cause a lot of problems, and oftentimes when you're trying to like resolve them, it just is super time consuming because you're like, I don't know which service at what point broke what. So. Okay, so how does PACT actually help with this, and what is PACT contracting, PACT contract testing anyways? Um, so at a high level, that contract testing um, creates a practice of creating contracts between services. So for a consumer, um, you can you can think of it as like a front end or another service, and you'd have like a provider service, and there's that link between it from the previous slide. So you would have like these links between these. Um, Essentially, what PAC does is it provides a service, this PAC broker that's in the middle here. The consumer service uh, like creates a contract against the provider service to understand all the expectations that it's trying to lay out from the provider service. Once the provider service actually gets deployed, it, it'll actually replay the PAC against the provider service and then ensure that everything works out correctly. So if you pair this with CI-CD practices, you can actually figure out where things are breaking before deployments happen. If you do it without it, I mean, it gives you more insight into where the breakage happened. Um, so lastly, this is actually a screen of like what the pack broker actually gives you. Um, you have all the consumers and providers, all the contracts in between them, the last time a pact was published, um, and even the last verification, if things went right or, you know, something broke, it'll show up really cleanly. And a web havoc status if you want to implement that to kind of th have things um, run as soon as something's deployed. So, another plug for my company, we're hiring. <laughs> um, so follow us on any of these social media outlets. And thank you.